So I am someone who would be a user and I'm not in the technical space, but I'm president of a nonprofit national organization in the United States that is really about harnessing human interactions between people on a very, very uh, in-person level where we acknowledge that the way we collaborate effectively and powerfully and move through challenges as human beings and as a species is through our ability to bring our collective intelligences together in person. Now, that being said, throughout the pandemic, we had to evolve, right? So our work had to be done online. And so we had to adjust and we had to figure out how to bring that human interaction online and in a space. So we've learned a lot. And even in that, what we learned is many people still are not completely ready to be completely immersed in a, a metaverse that's a complete virtual reality. So I, I don't think we're ready and, and I don't think it will be fully immersive. Yet, it will be timely, it will bring great innovation and it will bring great despair. Uh, on the timely question, you know, having alternative universes that you can embed in can be very important and powerful. We saw that with the pandemic, the need for non-physical space to access resources. So I used my organization as an example. We started bringing hundreds upon hundreds of people together on Zoom to try to mimic in-person online. And thank God for it. Thank God for us being super users of Zoom and having the ability to translate human practices, human psychology into a virtual sphere. So in an event of like a catastrophic event or crisis or something like a pandemic, in some ways it's timely to think about this kind of technology and to advance it. But even with that, as soon as people could, and, and as we see now, they are running back to the ability to be in physical space with each other for physical touch, for the ability to see human eyes and to look in and see them sparkle and to get hugs and to talk in ways that allow people to really have meaningful conversations. So for example, we do a lot of work around equity and race, racial justice and you know, very hard to be in deep conversations like that if you're in a completely virtual space. That being said, the innovation possibilities are really powerful. I think around art and business and education, it, it could be amazing to see what advancements that could occur in either an augmented space or a fully immersive space. I mean, as someone who's lost loved ones, like many of you, I mean, I would love to immerse myself in a space where my family members before they die, record messages, record things they think could happen in the future. And I could be immersed in a technology where I see them, feel an experience of them and hear their messages. I mean, like that would be amazing where I could experience art and I could do things and learn things in the event of a climate disaster or if I need to have that kind of solace. But on the despair side, what happens when you embed too much, right? We become alone. We become humans inside a portal and our mental health can be challenged. So I think we have to really address what kind of collaboration can we have, like real deep human collaboration if we're just immersed in a virtual space. I think people know those limitations and therefore wouldn't jump in that quickly. And I think mental health wise, we have to think about the ethics of what being in that kind of space can do, particularly if it's immersive and you're being encouraged to buy things or the person's being exploited in ways beyond what they even know or understand. And then the equity ethics, right? On the despair side, I mentioned mental health the inability to collaborate effectively as human beings, you know, will money only get you access? You know, who's going to be building this? Is it going to be built with people who don't have resources and are thinking about how to design for the margins? Right now we have a society built on profit motive and capital, but sometimes there is deep limitation to what that can do and provide for people in these spaces. And if we don't design for people who are most impacted, in times of crisis or, or who are at the margins, they won't be able to fully participate in this or worse, might even be hurt by it. And I'm thinking about low income communities, communities of color who don't have access to technology at the same rates. And frankly, in their culture, want to be in proximity, physical proximity. 
I think about people with disabilities who are, you know, both helped by technology, but may be hurt if it's not appropriately accommodated for them. Uh, people for whom English and technology are not their first or most comfortable language, right? So I think those are things to think about. And then finally, adaptation. I just think it's going to be slower than we think. I mean, I think we made a leap with the pandemic around technology, but to go fully immersive or even something that's more of a virtual reality, I think younger generations can adopt quicker. But like Facebook, where if you remember, you know, the millennials came on first, right? Then the generation Xers, then the boomers, right? It was like, it took a while for each generation to adapt. So I think eventually, maybe it's not 2040, maybe it's, you know, 2048, or, you know, or something like that. By that point, either the older generations that are not used to technology will have passed on or those generations will all be on. Um, but I think there'll be a process of upheaval and tension before this can emerge. Frankly, I think the climate crisis could be that thing. If like the pandemic, it creates such, such insecurity that people are um, afraid to leave their homes in different ways. And we have access to technology and we bridged more of the digital divide, then I think something like this could be a lifesaver for some people. And um, finally, I'll just say, whatever we do, I think it needs to be aligned with, with a global plan, commitment to equity, our mental health, and we continue necessary physical human interaction as a part of it.